Hello students welcome to English class let's continue with act 1 scene 1 of the play Merchant of Venice Now let's have a quick recap of the scene When the play began Antonio was found to be sad and the and he was unable to identify the reason for his sadness Salario the friend of Antonio consoles Antonio saying that Antonio is sad as he is totally engrossed about his argosies in the sea then we find another friend of antonio that is selanio consoling him saying that he would have been equally sad if his argosies were at the sea now we'll begin with selarino's dialogue over here selarino is sharing with antonio regarding what would have been his feeling while he is at o if his rich argosies laden with riches were at sea then so first we can copy the meaning of difficult words there broth meaning soup broth meaning soup egg meaning fever with shivering egg meaning fever with shivering so what selarino says is that while he is at home and when he is cooling a soup by blowing upon it the mere blowing upon the soup in order to make it cool will make him tremble with fear thinking about what might happen to his ship if there is a strong wind in the sea then so selarino continues i should not see the sandy or glass run but i should think of shallows and flats and see my wealthy wealthy andrew docked in sand wailing or high top lower than her ribs to kiss a bari so here we find selarino sharing with antonio the second thought that would make him feel sad while at home when he is mean to think about argosies at the sea you can copy down the meaning of difficult terms sandy or glass meaning instrument used for measuring time shallows meaning shallow waters flats meaning sand banks sand banks andrew meaning big ships big ships dogged meaning run aground or to get dog dot run aground that is not capable of moving ahead next wailing a high top meaning lowering a top of the mast lowering the top of the mast then to kiss a burial meaning they by kissing the sand or she will be buried in the sand so line wise explanation i should not see the sandy or glass run meaning whenever i am at home whenever i find the sandy or glass clock work i should think of shallows and of flats i am made to think about the shallow waters and the sand banks in the sea and see my wealthy andrew docked in the sand and also i am made to imagine about what will be the plight of wealthy andrew or my wealthy ship if it gets struck or if it gets aground in the shallow banks or the shallow waters or the sand banks at sea if it so happens to my wealthy andrew what is going to happen is that wealthy andrew will get docked in the sand will run aground in the sand then it will be made to wail her eye top lower than her ribs to kiss a barrier then it will be made to lower her mast and you know what happens to the ship once it lowers its mast in the middle of the sea right if it lowers its mast it will not be able to move ahead thereby it will be made to be buried deep in the sea or it will get damaged for ever now next line 
should I go to church and see the holy edifice of stone and not bethink me straight of dangerous rocks which touching but my gentle vessel side would scatter all asphyxes on the stream and row the roaring water with my silks and in a word but even now worth this and now worth nothing so now copy the word meaning holy edifice holy edifice means holy building next line bethink meaning makes me think next line vessel vessel here means ship next one enrobe meaning cover over here what we find is selarino connecting all the items which we find in and around to his thoughts related to argosies which is at the sea so he is telling should i go to church whenever i go to church and see the holy edifice of stone and whenever i find the holy building which is made up of stone and not bethink me straight of dangerous rocks whenever i find the holy building made of stone not bethink me it makes me think about the dangerous rocks it makes me think about the dangerous rocks which touching by my gentle vessel side if such a dangerous rock touches my gentle vessel or my big ship what will happen to my ship that is the thought which comes to his mind whenever he find the rocks which is of the holy building or the holy church so what he says about is that if such a rock touches if a dangerous rock touches my holy ship then it will be enough to scatter all the spices on the street if such a thing happens it is quite enough to scatter all the spices inside the ship onto the water and rove the roaring water with my silk and if such a thing happens all the silks will be covering the water <coughs> the silk which is present in his argosy will be scattered along with spices here and there and thus it will cover the water and in a word but even now worth this and now worth nothing so in a word what's going to happen is but even now worth this even now worth this means the ship which is a worthful item till now the ship which is a worthful item till now and now worth nothing but once it gets struck on a dangerous rock it will become worth for nothing how it is going to be worth for nothing is all the silks all the spices will get scattered in the sea then the spices and silks will no no more be valuable thus the ship which was worthful till then will become worth nothing once it gets struck on the rock so he continues saying shall i have the thought to think this shall i lack the thought that such a thing be chance would make me sad shall i have the thought to think on this and shall i lack the thought that such a thing be chance would make me sad shall i have the thought to think this meaning if i can connect all my thoughts to the argosies in the sea shall i lack the thought that such a thing be chance would make me sad if i am made to connect all my thoughts to argosies in the sea then at the same time shall i lack the thought i cannot stop thinking that such a thing be chance meaning if such a bad thing happens then thinking about if a bad thing happens to my ship if suppose my ship gets aground on the sand or if suppose my ship gets struck on a dangerous rock thinking all these things would definitely make me sad but tell not me i know in ton you a sad to think upon his merchandise but tell not me meaning you need not tell me in ton you 
I know Antonio. I know well Antonio. You are sad because you are thinking about all the possible dangers for your merchandise. So Salerno is telling Antonio, you need not tell me. I can understand why you are sad. You are sad because you are thinking about all the possible dangers that might happen to your that might happen to your merchandise. So let's see what Antonio says about it. Believe me, no. I thank my fortune for it. My ventures are not in one bottom treasure, nor to one place, nor is my whole estate upon the fortune of this present year. So you can write the word meaning ventures, meaning business. Next, bottom, meaning ship. Estate, meaning business. So what Antonio says is that believe me, please believe me. No, it is not for that reason. I am not sad thinking about my merchandise. I thank my fortune for it. Fortune means I really thank my God for it, for making me so fortunate. My ventures are not in one bottom trusted. My business affairs or my financial status is not in one bottom trusted. Is not based upon the wealth of one particular ship. My financial situation or my financial status is not based on the wealth that is entrusted in one ship, not to one place. Moreover, it's not confined to one place alone. Nor is my old estate, nor is my entire business dealings upon the fortune of this present year based just upon the fortune or the profit that I make this year. So what Antonio means is that, no, I am not at all sad thinking about my ships in the sea. The reason given by Antonio for it is that, he says that, my ventures is not in one bottom trusted. My entire financial situation or status is not based on the property or on the wealth which is confined in one ship. Moreover, it is not based upon the entire profit that I make this year alone. Moreover, it is not confined to a single place alone. So, if something happens to ship also, it's not a great problem for me. So, it is not my thought related to ships in the sea that makes me feel sad. Therefore, my merchandise makes me not sad. Merchandise meaning ships. So what he means is that, therefore, it is not my ships in the sea that makes me feel sad. So now starts the dialogue of Salerno. So Salerno is chilling. Why then? You are in love. So Salerno is asking. So it is not that matter also. Then maybe you are in love. That's why you are so sad. So hearing this, Antonio is chilling. Fine, fine. So Antonio is chilling. Antonio is not such a man. So he's chilling. No, fine, fine. Shame on you, Salerno. It's even not for that reason. So thing is that Antonio don't know why he is sad and Salerno, Salanio is trying to find out the reason for Antonio's sadness or helping him to find out the reason for his sadness. So here starts the dialogue of Salerno. Not in love neither. Then let us say you are sad because you are not merry and we are as easy for you to laugh and leap and say you are merry because you are not sad can copy the word meaning twer. It's an old English. Twer, it means it will be. Leap, meaning jump. So, Salerno is asking. So, you are not in love neither. So, you are also not in love. Then, let us say you are sad. Then, let us conclude that you are sad because you are not merry. If it is not the reason to, then I don't have anything more to say. We can simply say that you are sad just because you are not happy. There is no more reason to be given. And it were as easy for you to laugh and leave. And it would have been so easy for you to jump and laugh and say you are happy if you had not been sad. So thing is that what he means is that I don't have anything more to say about you. If you are not in love neither, then it means that you are sad just because you are not happy. That's all. So, he further says, By now, by two-headed Janus, nature hath framed strange fellows in her time, 
some that will ever more peep through their eyes and laugh like parrots at a bagpiper, and other of such vinegar aspect that they'll not show their teeth in way of smile, though Nestor say, swear the job, word by its meaning, Janus. Janus meaning is given in your textbook itself. Janus is Roman god of doors, just like the doors have got two phases, inner and outer. Similarly, what is said is, nature has created two different types of men with different outlook. That is, some will always be having a frowning appearance on their face. On the other hand, other group is that even if they are, they have got a bitter experience. Even then, they will cover it with a sweet smile on their face. So, which are the two categories of people created by goddess of nature or uh, Janus? That is, goddess of nature has created two types of people. One who have got a frowning appearance always and the other who has got a smiley countenance or counter, a smiling face always. Next word meaning bagpiper. Bagpiper means the one who plays bagpipe. Bagpipe is an instrument which is used in the band functions and so. Next word meaning vinegar aspect meaning gloomy appearance. Next one nestor. It's given in your textbook. Nestor is an old and wise Greek general who fought in the Trojan War. A joke had to be extremely funny if Nestor laughed at it. That is, Nestor will laugh only on an extremely funny joke. Now, line-wise meaning. Now, by the two-headed Janus, meaning in the name of Roman god Janus. Nature hath created, hath framed strange fellows in her time, meaning nature has created strange fellows, different kind of men in her time. Who are the different kind of men? I told you before, one category who has always got a frowning appearance and the other category who has always got a smiling appearance. Some that will ever more peep through their eyes and laugh like parrots at a bagpiper. So what's said about those people with a smiling appearance is that they will ever more peep, they will always be laughing through their eyes and as a result their eyes near the eyes it will get wrinkled when you laugh a lot there will be a wrinkle appearing near your eyes and they will be laughing like parrots at a bagpiper for every reason and for no reason they will laugh they will laugh even at the sound of a person playing bagpiper bagpipe bagpipe is not a funny thing and it doesn't make an ordinary man to laugh right but those who have got, who belongs to this category, that is the category of people whom the nature has created to be always laughing, will be laughing even for no reason. They will laugh even at the sound of a bagpiper playing. And the other, of such vinegar aspect. And the second category is those with gloomy appearance or those with frowning appearance. They will not show their teeth in the way of smile. They will not show their teeth even to smile. Though Nestor swear the just be laughable. Even if the joke which was said by someone was an extremely funny one. Which would make even the Roman general Nestor laugh. If Nestor is to laugh it means that the joke is funny. Even on hearing such an extremely funny joke also these people will not laugh. So nature has created how many categories of people? Two categories. One is frowning, one is smile. Smiling people will be laughing for every reason and for no reason. They will be laughing like what? Like parrots, even at the sound of a bagpipe being played. On the other hand, those with a gloomy appearance will not laugh at all. They will not even show their put their teeth out to laugh, even if the joke is said to be extremely funny. Later, Bassanio, Lorenzo and Graciano. So by the time we find the entry of various other characters in this play. Who are the characters mentioned here? Bassanio, Lorenzo, Graciano. We know who Bassanio is. Bassanio is the best friend of Antonio. And I told you he is a spendthrift. Lorenzo and Graciano are the other friends of Antonio. So Celanio starts. Here comes Bassanio, your most noble kinsman. Graciano and Lorenzo, fare you well. We leave you now with better company. So word meaning kinsmen, meaning friends.
So line wise meaning here comes Bazzanio, your most noble kinsman, Graciano and Lorenzo. Meaning here comes Bazzanio and also the other friends like Graciano and Lorenzo. Your best friend Bazzanio and Graciano and Lorenzo. Fare ye well. Meaning goodbye. We leave you now with better company. So we are leaving you now for you have gone the company of your better friends. Or you have better people to entertain you now. So before leaving, Salarado's telling, I would have stayed with you. I would have stayed till I had made you marry if for your friends had not prevented. What Salarano means here is that I would have stayed till I had made you marry. I would have stayed with you till I have made you happy. If worthy of friends had not prevented me. If your worthy of friends. Who are the worthy of friends mentioned here? Graciano, Bessanio, Lorenzo and all those. If those worthy of friends had not prevented me. Had not prevented me from staying here. That is since they came. Now it's our time to go. That is what he means. So Antonio's dialogue. Your worth is very dear in my regard. I take it your own business calls on you and you embrace the occasion to depart. Word meanings regard, meaning esteem or respect. Business, your own business, meaning your needs. Your other matters, calls means needs. So what Antonio means is that <coughs> Your worth is very dear in my regard, meaning even I have great regard for you. I respect you people also a lot. I take it, meaning I think it. I take it your own business calls on you, meaning I think that it is your other pending works, your own business, your works that calls on you, that makes you move away from me now and you embrace the occasion to depart. And now you are embracing the occasion, meaning you are taking the opportunity to depart. You are taking the opportunity at the arrival of Lorenzo, Graciano and Bizanio to depart now. So dear students, we will end up a class here. Until we meet again, goodbye.